Welcome back to Draymond Does Gaming. Draymond here playing something a little bit different today. Today we are going to be playing some Baldur's Gate 3. Um, yeah, it's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> something new. Something, uh, well, I mean, fairly new in terms of of when it came out, etc. I don't do that too often. Um, nor do I do um, games like this too often. So this this will be pretty neat. Um, today we um, so some background with Baldur's Gate three. Um, I'm a big Baldur's Gate fan. Played one when it came out. Played two when it came out. Played the Icewind De Dale series when they came out. Um, one and two. Um, so I really like those old school RPGs. I played like through Pillars of Eternity one and two. I played through Pathfinder Kingmaker, Wrath of the Righteousness, etc. I played a lot of these CRPGs. Um, I've always had a lot of fun with them. Um, and this being a big new game, um, I thought this would be a fun one to to show off and play. Um, I think you guys will enjoy it. Um, so there's there's two things that I want to do with this. One, um, I've already played through Baldur's Gate 3, through the story, through everything. Um, so I already know some things that are happening. However, like talking with other people, um, <laughs> the way I played the original game, like when I went through it, um, was vastly different than a majority of people. So it'll be interesting to kind of see what see how this progresses here and if i make the same choices or not um going through so it'll be it'll be neat for me to see i can give a little bit of context on things that i have seen or haven't seen um at those times um and the other thing is i played through on the balance difficulty which is like your straight you know really focusing on the story and everything um and there were there were some times where it was challenging sometimes where it was um easy etc but i thought it was an overall pretty actually balanced difficulty um but we're not going to do that today we're going to hit a new game um and one of the biggest things that i was looking at was honor mode um the honor difficulty um uh, stronger bosses stricter rules um but the really big thing that i'm not a fan of is the single save file um, I had these issues with XCOM I've had these issues with other games as well where you just you encounter a bug in the middle of the the game or something like that and things just you, you can't continue your run because it auto saved and you're coming right back into that same spot but they did something for this, which I really like, and that's the custom difficulty. So you can take all the honor mode difficulties, you can take all that stuff, and build it into your own customized experience. So I think that's what we're gonna do today. So like the very first thing they have, single save, no. Um, I'm, I'm keeping that off. I'm not planning on save scumming. If we come to a point where the party wipes, I will end the series there and that will be that as if we were in an honor mode um but beyond all of that i really think that the the single save option it's just never been a thing for me in games um it's a, it always sounds good on premise but then you encounter a bug. And and I will say, there's a specific area in Act 3 where that could be a very big issue as well. So that that is one uh, one thing that I, I would say too, where I, I had to constantly reload my game because of crashes, because of bugs, because of stuff. And I don't think they've fixed it yet. So, um, so that worries me. Um, so I'd rather not... Um, keep single save on so we're gonna keep it off however we are going to up a few things here and one thing that i like about difficulty settings is the ability to modify 
how enemies act, what spells, what abilities they have access to, um, how their tactics work. As a DM myself, I am not a fan of just giving my monsters an extra plus five to attack or a plus, you know, plus ten to damage. Um, even though they're the same level, even lower level than the heroes, like that, it never made sense to me. So I don't like that. Um, however, enemies attacking ruthlessly and efficiently, I love. I love that. They're going to go for the weaker targets. They're going to, those frontline guys are going to try to get through to your squishy back line. Um, enemy loadouts, they have advanced spells. They'll drink their potions. They'll use their, their items that they have. So that's cool. Additional combat mechanics. So these are things like um, legendary actions are given to your um, to your um, bosses and stuff. Your drag like dragons will have legendary actions to do things, and I like that. It's this one that I'm not a fan of. <laughs> so, and that's speaking just straight up as a DM. I don't like things that say that they're hard just because you give them an arbitrary plus five or plus ten to their whatever like it that that's not fun to me so i'm, I'm going to keep this as balanced um so everyone has that same progression as you go through so um same thing with the proficiency bonus um proficiency bonus is just normal I don't think this... Yeah. Yeah. Proficiency bonus is normal. And basically everything else is going to be exactly where we want it to be. Um, I do I do want this one on. It's kind of nice just to know if we need to use um, spells and things. I think that's a, a, diff, a setting that's already included in the base balanced one as well. I always remember seeing like your your target check, right? So, and even as a DM, I generally give people the target or a very, you know, very close to what that target they need to hit is. Um, and beyond that, that's what we're changing out of the base game. Um, I'm not worried about camp cost multipliers or things like that. It's, you get, that that was always a weird thing for me. Like it's it's not a survival game. And again, as even if it was a survival game, the way to implement that is not by it costs twice as much. <laughs> so um it's it always goes against me as a DM to do stuff like that. So um but yeah so that's that's our difficulty we're just basically ramping up the enemy aggression loadouts combat mechanics and we're gonna hit start so it's gonna go right into a cutscene, um and then we'll make our character we'll see you over there go <laughs> mind flayers
Yeah. Very gross. Imagine seeing that. <laughs> you wake up and that's what you see. That would be terrifying. Uh, who am I? That is a good question. Um, so, in this, you these are the party members that you could be or could get throughout the game, etc. Um, these are the origin characters. If you ever played Divinity Original Sin, very similar to that. Um, you know, these, these are characters you could pick and choose and follow their story. Um, but that's not what we're going to do. We're going to do custom. Um, going to be a boy. Um, and then there's two things that we, we really need to make a decision on. Um, and I thought about this for a while. One of the biggest things is class. Like, what what role do I want to fulfill in the party? Um, when I originally played this, I played through as a paladin. I really like paladins. I like the high charisma characters. Um, but I also, if I don't know the game, it's also very nice to have someone who's kind of tanky, um, who can take on fights on their own, etc., in case they get into trouble. So that's why I chose Paladin through my first playthrough. I think through when I played Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, um, I played through it first as a, as a Paladin, went through the whole story like that. But then I played through it the second time as my favorite class, my personal favorite class, and that's the Bard. Um, and I think that's what I'm going to do today. I think I'm going to choose the Bard um, I always loved the idea of, um, having that high charisma, having that ability to, um, really, um, talk your way out of situations, right? Um, it's always neat. I like bards too, because they have so many good, um, support spells, support things. They're not, they're not always going to be your main, um, a attacker they're not going to be your main healer but they can support everybody they can fill whatever role that you need at that time so that i always thought was pretty fun so uh, that's what we're going to do today we're going to be a bard um i also thought about sorcerer too sorcerers are pretty cool um they're also high charisma based um characters as well so but they they really fulfill a smaller role comparatively to what the bar does. Uh, they definitely look cooler though. <laughs> not gonna lie. Uh, um, you get you get a lot more damage spells and things like that, um, which would be neat. But I think we're gonna go bard today. Um, and then we have to figure out which class do we want to be. Um, and there's some good ones. Um, honestly, I really thought about human if they had the variant human. Uh, I'm not a fan of these features for the human, the civil militia, um, proficiency with spears, pikes, halberds, glaives, and light armor shields, like whatever. <laughs> That's, and human versatility is nice though. Select an additional skill to be proficient in. Um, that's always good one extra skill to choose at the start of the, the game is always very nice. Um, thought about elf. Um, elves are always neat. Elven weapon training, dark vision, pay ancestry, and they have subclass. Yeah, actually, humans, humans don't even have sub-races in this. I didn't realize that. Um, in base D&D, like, there are different types of humans out there, so they have different sub-races, and so it's odd to see no nothing there okay so humans off my list um i've already played through as typhling typhlings are are very cool i always th i always thought they were very neat um so i'm not going to worry about doing that this time 
Um, Drow is interesting. They would be a very interesting pick. Um, they're mostly hated <laughs> throughout the world, so it would be interesting to be a Drow bard. Um, but I don't think that's what I want to do. Get the Yankees are neat as well, but I don't. I'm not. I'm just not feeling. Um, get the Yankee. Um, I've never been someone to play a dwarf, so I'm just gonna pass over dwarves. Sorry, they could have the coolest abilities and stuff. It's just not my thing. Um, half elves are always neat too. Um, can take a little bit of the human, a little bit of the um, elf. Um, stats and put together into a nice little package. Um, what's the sub race for this? You get oh, it's just increase your movement speed. Oh, like why would you never take that? Like you would always take this. That seems silly. Um, halflings are like your typical um, bard, and that's not a bad thing to per se. Um, the halfling abilities are really cool. The um, lucky, if you roll on one on a attack roll ability check or saving throw, you can reroll die and use that new roll. I'm really thinking about that. I think that would be nice. Um, the other one that I was really thinking about is gnome. Um, gnomes are very similar to halflings. Um, in terms of their stature and stuff. Um, they like to explore, um, they're clever, etc. Um, they get advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws, which is, is very nice. Like, as a bard, we'll already get the charisma one. Um, or we won't have advantage, but we have proficiency in it at least. Um, so having, having advantage to these saving throws is extremely nice versus lucky where you roll one on an attack roll ability check or saving throw you get you just re-roll it it's very nice um dragonborns are pretty cool um basically they just get like an acid breath and resistance to acid or lightning or fire etc right that's basically it in cold yeah okay um, so they're, they're neat. I don't think they're what I want to play as for a bard, though. And half-orc, same thing. I just, I don't see them as a bard. So really the biggest thing between halfling and gnome. So we're going to take a quick look at their subclasses. So you have lightfoot halflings who get advantage on stealth checks. Very nice. Um, we're going to have a high dex. We're going to have a high charisma. So both of those things are very good. Or strong heart saving throws against poison and resistance to poison damage. Not that interested in. So I would take I would take this versus the gnome who has dark vision, proficiency to history. Okay, speak with animals is nice um, and dark vision. Okay, or superior dark vision. In stone camouflage and I really think that that might be the way to go we'd have advantage 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 we'd are we'd have advantage on stealth checks and I kind of want to see how this plays out because there are points in time with these guys um, where being a raw a, a deep gnome might we might, that might be a cool thing. Um, so yeah. So I think I'm going to go like this. Or do we go, ah, uh, you know what, we'll, we'll take a look at the, at the appearance, I think, first, before we, before we really dive in. Um, I want to see like what our options are. Hmm. Okay. Where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells. Something just woke up down here. Yeah, that could be good. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. 
more of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I don't know if I like that. Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells, something just woke up to be wary. It's opened. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I can feel it's all. Yeah. Okay, I like that. That's kind of neat. Dusk tone, eh? As a deep gnome, yeah, you know, you kind of want to go like in that realm, right? I think that's probably fine. Do we want any scars on us? I've always been partial to like a scar that's like that. I don't know why I have been. I just always have. And I like the just straight clean face. Right? Maturity. Like, how old do we think we are? You know. Um, freckle qual quantity. I don't think that overly matters to me. Um, no, I don't really need that pigmentation. Okay. So. I think that's kind of the base of what we would look like. Body art. Do we want any tattoos, basically? Um, I don't think so. I'm not a big fan of like the face tattoos. Um, could have earrings though and piercings. That's always fun. Uh, oh yeah, a whole bunch everywhere. Midnight tears. Kind of neat. Kind of like that. Okay. Honestly. I mean. More along the lines of that. I like. I don't think I need makeup. Hair. Huh? <laughs> Uh, right. All the hairstyles that you can have. Do gnomes, gnomes normally have hair. I don't know about deep gnomes. So that would be an interesting thing. Is there anything that I really feel like looks good with this? type of character. Uh, I'm definitely more of like a shorter haired person. <laughs> Some of these stylings are very interesting. It's kind of similar to what my actual haircut is. Um, there you go, balding. That could be neat. Something like that. Get like the shaved all around. See, so I don't mind like that type of thing. Um. <laughs> A tidy mohawk versus what? Oh, piranha tooth. Yeah, no, not like that. Orchestra wings. <laughs> uh, some of these are just interesting to say the least. Um, longer hair, again, not my kind of thing for. Hmm. Kind of neat. Um, what was that one that we were looking at? <laughs> um, with the shave sides. Yeah, that could be neat. Um, the white hair would be 
Do we want it to be white? But like a like black hair on you. That would be interesting as well. Black red. Ah. Oh, well, that's kind of neat. We can change the appearance to I actually kind of like that. Um, do we want highlights in the hair? Yeah, that kind of makes it all look all patchy. Okay. I don't think so. Grain. I don't think we want grain. Facial hair. As a bard? Meh. I'm okay. Um, so we're going to go back to our character now because I think we got yeah, what we want in terms of appearance. There we go. There is our character that we're going to be bringing through with us in this campaign. So we're going to take a look at some spells that we're going to get. Blade Ward and Vicious Mockery is what they've given us. Um, Vicious Mockery for sure, it's an 18, 18 meter, um, and it does a little bit of damage, but also really the biggest part of it is disadvantage on their next attack roll. Very good. Blade Ward, take only half damage from bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing attacks for two turns. It's concentration, I believe. Um, just kind of nice. Mage Hand is not useful in this one, unfortunately. Um, we're not that useful, I should say. Um, as much as I would, I like Mage Hand in regular d, &D I found it in Baldur's Gate not overly effective, so I'm not going to worry about taking it. True Strike is meh as well. If you have nothing better to do, I guess you could True Strike and make your next uh, attack roll advantage. Um, yeah. Friends is kind of neat. Gain advantage on charisma checks against a non-hostile creature, but they m might accuse you of enchanting them. Um, dancing lights and light and stuff I don't think we overly need, because we have superior dark vision. So I think we'll just keep Blade Ward, I guess. In terms of spells, though, the biggest one that I want is one that they've given us, which is Tasha's Hideous Laughter. This is one of my favorite spells. Leave a creature prone with laughter without the ability to get up. It's so good. <laughs> uh, I just love it. I love the idea of it. Um, we're also going to take Healing Word because we are going to be a... Not a full healer, but just a someone who can get someone up. You know, the occasional... You know, you took a hit, you know, I could heal you type of thing. Um, heroism is kind of neat. Immune to Frightened. Five temporary hit points. So that's kind of cool. I like Bane. Bane is very good. What's the other one that they gave us? Dissonant Whispers. 3d6 psychic damage. That frighten them. They'll have disadvantage on ability checks. And they can't move. Okay. So I think I'm going to... Take off Heroism, put on Bane. I like Bane. Three creatures receive a minus 1d4 penalty to attack rolls and saving throws. And I actually kind of like this. Dissonant Whispers, a little bit of damage. Doing a lot of psychic stuff. That's kind of cool. Um, Thunder Wave is nice. You just blast people around you and then push them away. Um, Feather Fall is cool. Longstrider is nice. But I think that's what we're going to want. Starting instrument. Um, I'm, a, I'm a lute kind of guy. I like the guitars and things like that. But it's so big. Um, maybe we'll do a flute. Because it's just a smaller... Yeah, I think we'll just do flute. There we go. And then the background. What do we think we would be? Um, 
that's just it, right? Acolyte, mm, don't think so. Charlatan, maybe. Um, expert in manipulation, prone to exaggeration, more than happy to profit from it. Uh, see, that's what I'm, that part I'm not too, too happy about. Um, criminal, um, not really. Entertainer is like your basic bard, acrobatics, performance, stuff like that. Um, folk hero is kind of cool. Um, but not a big fan of those skills, animal handling and survival. Guild artisan, all right. Membership in the mercantile guild, offering privileges and protection while engaging in your art. Um, whether, you know, it doesn't say what that art is, so we could always come up with something. Insight and persuasion are very nice skills. Um, noble, um, power, privilege, you know, you know, nobility. Outlander, athletic survival. Um, I don't think so. Sage could be neat. Arcana in history. Soldier. Don't think so. Urchin. Urchin could be cool. Um, that's your your uh, house. You pick locks, pockets, disarm traps, stealth. We get advantage on stealth already, so that could be good. Thinking guild artisan or urchin. I think urchin. And then we're going to go to our abilities. Because um, this is this is one of those things where we really want to kind of focus on. Um, not planning on being um, in the front line that much. So I'd like to do something along the lines of this. Where we either have a slightly higher intelligence or slightly higher wisdom. Um, probably intelligence. Uh, I guess it would make more sense as wisdom. Um, high dexterity, high charisma um, in terms of like our, our casting stat is charisma. Um, influences trader prices stuff like that it a lot of our abilities are going to be based off charisma so that's nice um we're going to use a bow or finesse weapons generally so um like rapiers and things like that so dexterity makes sense um yeah and then the intelligence because one of the things with bards is you're generally someone who knows a lot of skills um so i like the intelligence and the wisdom getting the pluses and then as we continue through we can increase these um and then i really want to get I, I don't think i need intimidation performance deception I like persuasion um do we need performance? Performance would be good as Bard. Um, I would love to get like insight, investigation, perception. Um, so those, those are all things that would be good. You know what? I'm going to take off deception because it's not something that we need right now. And I might put this into either perception or insight. I like insight. Really do. Yeah. Let's do that. I think that's what we're gonna do as our as our character. Um Do we get to pick our name? Do we do that on... Ah, here. Gale! <laughs> no, thank you. Um, we are going to be Draymond. I know, it's very fitting, isn't it? 
Um, so here we go. We're going to proceed. So, this is always something interesting with this. Um, the Guardian is someone that's going to be kind of in our mind um, helping us through things. We need to kind of pick their appearance. It doesn't overly matter too much um, what they are, how they appear to us. Could be halfling. Could be a gnome too. Half orc. Um, let's do halfling. I don't think a lot of this stuff really matters too much. Um, I'm not going to put a lot of effort into this. Maybe the hair is slightly different. There's one hairstyle um, that I thought looked really neat. Um, where is it? Uh, if I can find it. Otherwise, this will be fine. I'm not not overly worried about um, building out the Guardian much. So, it's kind of similar to our hairstyle. But it was like longer. No, that's, that's the one that we have. Uh, where the heck is it? Ah, that one. Yeah, this one was always neat. Kind of like the braided look on the side and stuff. Um, yeah. Okay. And I think that's it. So there we go. That's going to be our guardian. A deep gnome with a guardian, that's a halfling. And I hope subtitles are on. I'll, ch I'll double check that after. Is the fabled Baldur's Gate. Not very good guards, are they? Dragons versus Mind Flayers. Githyanki versus... Man, this is so cool. <laughs> it's like kind of like now they're in the Icewind Dale area. It's like a little bit of homage to that. Neverwinter, Icewind Dale. Very similar looking to it. And there's there's some cool things with that, right? Where um, 
in this game. There's some some callback to previous ones, and we'll see some of that. I'll try to point out when I remember. might be in hell. Yeah, just gonna double check our settings and everything once we start here. <laughs> that shirt though, that shirt's gotta change. <laughs> <laughs> and the bats. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, we are going to make sure... Um, I think everything's, like, on high, too, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Not what I was looking for. Audio? Um, interface, subtitles, okay, perfect, good. Show text background, no, okay. All right, just really wanting to make sure, oh, and um, accessibility, um, oh, that was all under here too, okay. Um, camera shake, I, I might turn that off. Let me know in the comments if it bothers anybody about the camera shake. Um, I can turn it off for future um, future ones as well. So, okay. So, we have our character. Here is our character. We only have one person right now. Um, we can use Waz to kind of like look around, um, things like that. Press and hold alt. We can change the camera. We have all our abilities down here. We'll we'll expand upon all that stuff. Um, click on stuff, kind of see what it is. Oh, there's an onyx over here. Nice. As as a player, I'm I'm always <laughs> I'm always one to go exploring. I love exploring in games, so. We're going to be doing a lot of exploring and probably trying to find everything that the game has to offer, right? So, um, oops, we already done all of that. So, I mean, the game is so beautiful. And it's so weird to have, um, um, have a computer that can actually run everything so well. Yeah, no worries. I don't blame you. Let's take a look at. Mm-hmm. So let's take a look. Mind player corpse over here. Perdo. Another chest up here. Nice. Gems and money. Exactly what we need right now. <laughs> 
<laughs> so one thing that we have are these. Oh, frying bulb. Gross. Um, do I have a weapon? A hand crossbow. Okay. Um, so our inventory... Oh, they've switched some stuff around since I last played. There's, it's been some some uh, patches and stuff since I've last played. Um, God, that's so ugly. <laughs> uh, well, that's that it is. It is what it is. Um, so we have our AC. This is our armor class. Um, that's really something that we want to try and get up. The higher it is, the harder it is to hit someone. Um, this kind of gives us all of our different things that we have, um, as well as all of our stats, what we, what our initiatives are, move speed, dark vision range, all that fun stuff. Um, and these are all our tags, which is actually kind of neat. So the tags are something that came out of like Divinity. Um, basically, your character gets has these tags, and if there's an opportunity for um, in conversations or skill checks or things that any of these apply, there will be an extra option there that says like Deep Gnome this, Underdark this. So that'll be neat. So the only thing we have right now is a hand crossbow. Um, can we shoot this? Perfect. Just spilled acid everywhere. Exactly what I wanted to do. Oops. Um, this thing's cool. This one will restore you, but we don't need to. We are, I think, at full health and everything. Um, yeah, 8 out of 8. We have all of our spells. Bardic Inspiration. I could possibly do that to myself right now. Um, and we're going to go through the sphincter. Gross. Um, and we're going to come over here and just kind of see what we've got. We have our map over here. Brine jars, chairs, Eldritch tablet. Let's go take a quick look at that. Lovely. Cerebral Aquarium. Okay. Um, we're going to go up on this thingy. Kind of like an elevator. Kind of neat. Lovely. Um, maybe. <laughs> I'm just... I like to explore and just kind of see what there is along the way, right? Okay. Brain jar. Brain. Isn't that really all there is? Okay, well, we're gonna do this. Oh, we can't target ourselves with it? Oh, well. That's unfortunate. Okay. I will say this game is a little bit dark at the beginning. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> ah, yes. The brain. Hmm. Sweet. Failed the perception check already. First roll of the game. You sound afraid. Why? So many enemies. Who am I talking to? A man or a brain? You realize you're talking to an intellect devourer, a minion of the mind Okay. We got that save. Um, I think you're past the point of saving. Tell me what to do. Us 
Okay. We can investigate. We can strength. We can dex. Or we can destroy it. How about we inspect it first? Um, it's only a 10. Okay. So, inspecting it, we didn't get. That's a failure. Apart from this strange context, you notice nothing unusual about the brain. Okay, well, let's try to use our dexterity to get it out then. All right. Overall, not too bad. This is going to be a little graphic, FYI. <laughs> nice. So gross. The brain lifts from the skull. But you notice an opportunity. You could cripple the strange creature, making it more subservient, should it prove a threat. Interesting. I think we'll spare it. That's <laughs> so weird. Our freedom is ours, friend. The creature pauses, listening. Something behind your eyes seizes in recognition. We must go to the helm. But the helm, we are needed. All right. What's at the helm? What should I call you? We are us. All right. Well, let's go. To the hell we go. We are going to the There's nothing weird about this at all. And we can loot this guy. He's got nothing. Okay, so now we have a companion with us. Us. Um, so we can kind of see what they have here. Newborn, three turns remaining. Gathering its bearings. It has claw attack and stuff, so. Alright. I don't think there was much else to do here. So we're going to hop up on this. Take the ride back down. And we're going to head out. Take a look at that map. Yeah, the only way we can go is here. So that is the way we are going to go. Interesting. Hmm. Um, who are you? Your only chance of survival. What made you think I was a thrall? We carry mind flayer parasites. Unless we escape, unless we are cleansed, our bodies and minds will be tainted and twisted. Within days, we will be geek, mind flayers. 
We are turning in mind players? There must be something we can do. Yeah, it might be, <laughs> especially on this difficulty. So we'll see how this goes. First fight of the game. Here we go. We'll see how this changes a little bit, if at all. Okay. So you actually go first. Okay, so we are just going to have you run over here and try to attack it. Nice. We'll end your turn. Um, so there's a few things we could do here. And honestly, I don't think it's overly worth it to try and do do too much like craziness like try to you know um, use our spells and things so we are just going to try to hit this guy 90% chance we're just kind of gonna back up a little bit here and then Lizelle so Lizelle is an interesting character um, She is one of our companions that we'll have throughout the game. Um, she's a fighter, Gith Yankee, um, great weapon fighting. Uh, when you roll one or two on a damage die for an attack with two-handed weapon, you get to re-roll it once. It's kind of nice. So she does a lot of damage with two-handed weapons. Martial pro Prodigy, um, armor proficiency with light and medium. Short sword, long sword, great swords, and she can opportunity attack people. So that's one big thing about this, about this edition, I should say. Um, opportunity attacks aren't always necessarily a thing. You need to have the feet for it. So um, high strength, good con, um, not very good charisma, as you'll see. But her AC is 16, which is very nice. Um... Trained in athletics, acrobatics, survival, and intimidation. Um, yeah. So, you know, fighter. <laughs> fighter, fighter. That's what she is. Githyanki humanoid fighter Lizel. Okay. Um, she has a little bit of camp supplies, some potions of healing, and a scroll of Revify. Very nice. Um, basically, we're just going to get up here and try to kill this guy. And then we're going to drop back because I don't really want these guys to... I want them to press forward. Oh, they have fire. Oh, okay. I didn't realize they had that. Can you get to there? You can. Go us. There we go. We did it. We are so awesome. Thank you, Lizel. This is one reason. <laughs> She's always so, like condescending and stuff um potion of speed and a void bulb that's cool um yeah we're just gonna go and loot everything um scimitar Ooh, light crossbow better than a hand crossbow um right yeah we're gonna do that not proficient with that. We have a hand axe. We can put that in. I want to make that our go-to weapon, though. Um, just kind of want to see if there's anything along the sides or anything other than the dead thrall. Some more money. Not necessarily a bad thing. We're going to come back down here. Take a look at these guys. These imps and stuff all have some decent loot. Can we 
see anything up top. Doesn't look like it. So we're going to come over here. No one got injured or anything, so we don't need to use the restoration pod. Um, one thing I do want to do is um, send to Lizel. Oh, she has a short bow. Never mind. Uh, send back to Draymond. Okay. Oh, um. Let's get going. Oh, well, here we go. Some rapiers and stuff. All right, perfect. Good. That's what you want to see. Yeah. Still want to be ranged, but a rapier is very nice. Does that at least look cooler? Not really. <laughs> And it drops our AC, so we don't want to use that. Uh, Potion of Speed, though, is very nice. I do like that. Um, yeah, we're going to hop up here. Now, this is one thing, too. Like, it's been an hour, um, but I know this first episode, like, we're going to be really trying to... Like, we created our character and stuff. Um... So is this a good stopping point, or should we get through the intro stuff? Um, do we make these like a two two hour episodes at a time because there can be so much stuff? I kind of want to get through this first area just to really um, dive home what there is. Auto saving, perfect, thank you. Um, getting through here. So we are, we're going to power through this part here, I think, before we do much else. I think. Um, okay. Oh. Ooh, a backpack. Nice. Yes, we do. The construction is too alien. Nothing looks familiar. This hmm. ship is crashing. Do you intend to die for a stranger? For this one, yeah. Oh. Shadow hunt. Yeah, we will. We will in a minute. Just let's. There's a few things that we want to figure out first. Uh, ooh, there's a. Um. Okay. <laughs> Hello, intellect devour. see cuz i think yeah yeah how many hosts of this gate infected too many trapped inside the pod she doesn't notice you all right Eldritch rune, gold, copper ring. Alright. We found an Eldritch rune. Okay. So, can we like read it? Examine. Okay. Nope. Slave mind. We're going to want that. Oh, sweet. Two more potions. Place her hand on the console. 
connected to the pod, commanding the person inside to change. Ah. Okay. So this is great. Becoming a mind player, not great. So don't press the middle button, is basically what I'm seeing here. Change. Change the pull of a lever. How? If we are not purified, this may be our fate. Okay. All right, let's get the heck out of this one. Oh, I didn't see this dead thrall here. Let's go loot their body. Ooh, a gold key, scimitar. Well, we probably know what that key is for. Let's go open this guy up. Use the gold key, perfect. Um, left or right? Maybe left? Okay. To the right. I don't really want to push the middle one. Okay, the middle one doesn't seem to do anything. Hey, we can loot these guys now. <laughs> They're dead. Whoopsie. Okay. Oh, do we just do this one? The console appears dormant. There's a socket in the console shaped like the rune you found. Okay. The console hums to life. But what is its purpose? Will it free the captain? Other unfortunate. Uh, Arcana? Come on! Arcana. Nice. We have done it. Successful. All right. Well, then let's try it. Suddenly, you feel a hideous squirming in your head. The parasite. Then discomfort fades, and another sensation washes over you. Connection. Authority. Hmm. Will the prod? Will the pod to open? Oh. And say we have a pretty good chance of getting that. You feel the biomechanical brain of the console process your command and yield to it. A shiver runs across your mind. You feel sated. Nice. Oh. All right, let's start that conversation. You thought that damn thing was going to be my coffin. Thank you. Your mind into her uh, she's got one in her too. Uh, dangerous company is what you need in a fight. Alright then, let's get going. I'm Draymond. Hmm. That'll be Come on, time to go. Not too worried about asking much about it right now. She gets defensive about it. 
All right. Gain some XP. Um, with that, so Shadowheart's a neat character. She is a cleric, um, which is very good. Nice to have. Um, she's got Healing Word. Inflict Wounds is very nice. Guidance. Guidance is phenomenal um, in skill checks and things. So that'll be nice. And she also has Firebolt. Um, I will give her a like crossbow because I think she's proficient with them. Just nice to have the extra weapon. But she does have a mace. Um, it's very good with wisdom. Not very good with the charismatic. Um, and strength and dex is okay. What are her stats? Okay, they're kind of weirdly split. Um, yeah, okay. So wisdom, yeah, wisdom is nice. She's got good insight, medicine. She's trained in history and religion, so that's good. Um, Baldurian, Cleric of Shar, high half-elf. Half Elf, Humanoid, and Shadowheart. 16 AC as well, so she can be a, a bit of a frontliner, which is very good. And then we're gonna get on out of here. Um, I don't think we need to use the restoration because no one's been hurt yet. Um, where do we need to go? that way. So we kind of want to go down... Oh. We can only go one way here. Got it. Okay. Ah, Lizo. Yeah, they don't get along too well. Which, to be honest, we're all just trying to get the hell off this ship. Oh, lovely. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is one of the big things that we have to figure out. Um, yeah. yeah, you need to get up there, kill things, that's fine, and continue going. You just go. You're good. Um, we have 15 turns to try to get over as far as we can. I can go straight, just kind of take these guys out as we go. Oh, that was Shadowheart. For some reason, I thought that was Lysel. Whoops. Um, okay. I do want to try and loot some of these as we go by. Um, can I jump? Get over here. Cause I like I like looting things. This is what I do in games. I loot everything. Uh perfect. Um, and that's about as far as we want to get here. Unless I can get down there. Nope, that's as far as I can get. Perfect. Haha, -ha, he missed. Very good on us. Lyzel can get up here and miss. We will use the pommel strike. Only has one health, so we'll do that. And our turn, this guy comes at us. Ooh, good. 
Ouch. Um. We. What do you mean it? Our path is interrupted. So one of the things that we can do a lot in this game is kind of manipulate our movement with jumping. Um, we'll end your turn there. Can we see? It's an 18 AC fire resistance. God. Yeah. All right, have Shadow Heart kind of go around this way and take whatever we can from there. All right. Is one of the big things that we want to do is um yeah, ranged attack is get off this before things happen so there we go get you as far as we can also ranged attack good and our turn God, he's taking a lot of damage. Let's get up there as far as he can. Same thing with you. Um, while we're here, you know, we'll loot whatever we can. What we're trying to do. Oh, there's more up here now. Okay, got it. And try to aim at that guy. 80%. Do these guys have the same resistance? They do not. Alright. Well, we hit him. So I'm quite happy with that. Um. Grab that. Get up here. Grab that. Keep on going. It's as far as we can go. Ah, we can try shooting him. Can you hit that guy? Possibly. Nice. Oh good, he missed. Alright, bunch of stuff up here. I just want to move you up a little bit. Cambion Lieutenant. Nothing. Lovely. Chance of killing it. Ah, four damage. I'm trying to. Oh, good, he missed. Well, I'm trying to ignore the devil. Just try to get this guy a little bit of damage. Nice. Very good. All right. Firebolt. Oh, the first damage we've taken. Could be worse. All right, go get the mus. Nice. We're almost there. Loot. Be a little loot goblin. <laughs> loot everything. Uh, 
let's just be like right up here so next turn we can get that nice very good wait did this guy oh okay yeah we definitely want to get out of here nice A little axe um Try to take a pot shot at him from behind. Some axes. Some other stuff. Can we get up top? Is there anything cool up top that I see? It does not look like it on this side. Because you never know. There could be like a chest or something up there right doesn't look like it so we'll end our turn and these guys are running through here not exactly ideal and we'll end there other cambion is coming up level four jeez all right shadow heart Let's press the transponder. The Helm's alien transponder. You made it in time. Mm hmm. Not ideal. Yeah. Here we go. There we are. We have made it to the beach. All in all, not too bad. That was what you would count as like the introduction to the game. As you wait, the tadpole squirms in your skull. Gross. Um Check myself for injuries. Alright. We have made it to the Ravage Beach. Um, find a cure. 
we'll check out all that type of stuff after um, but this is a good stopping point nice little pose perfect great timing uh, so thanks again for watching hope you're enjoying the series so far um, and I don't know how long I think the episodes will be probably about an hour long give or take um, from here on out this one had all the character creation and everything too um, as kind of powering through that initial intro mission and everything so we'll kind of base it off of what we're doing when there's a good stopping point so thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time bye for now